All right, so I thought I would just really quickly walk through how I make these presentations. A few people have asked me if I could kind of break it down. This will get a bit geeky as I focus on the tools that I use. I'm going to do this pretty quick, and I'm not going to go too crazy on the editing. So let me know if you need more information. Just send me a comment or a note or something. So at the foundation of this is that I use a MacBook Air for everything. At times, especially when I have a really long presentation or I'm trying to export it into a video, you can really feel the MacBook Air being pushed to its limits. But in general, it works just great for what I need. So uh, that works out quite nicely. Next, the main piece of software I use kind of at the foundation of all of this is ScreenFlow. I think it typically is considered more like a screencasting kind of tool, but I think it's an amazing thing just to bring all the video and audio together. Sometimes I do all this stuff from within ScreenFlow, and sometimes I import audio and video into ScreenFlow and then do some of the final editing and getting the transitions and all that worked out in ScreenFlow. Either way, it's 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 so worth 99 bucks. Uh, this great tool. On top of that, to get these presentations right, I have a healthy dose of shame, angst, fear, and self-loathing that I try to inject into each of these presentations. So when I started this whole thing, I would do the video portion in Keynote. You could use PowerPoint just the same. I prefer Keynote's a little, I think, easier to use and produces more elegant uh, presentations, but same idea. And I use the built-in mic I wasn't doing animations at first. I was just tr basically trying to do some simple presentations. Uh, pretty quickly, though, I, I wasn't too happy with the built-in mic, so I broke down and bought a Blue Yeti microphone. I got it for under 100 bucks. I don't know how much, but it's a USB mic that just does great for what I need it to do. I also got a pop filter to put on it from Blue so that I could say the letter P without distortion. Then in order to kind of get the volume leveled out nicely, I, I ended up going through another process where I would record the audio into a program called Wiretap Studio. I would do a little bit of editing in Wiretap Studio uh, and then run it through a free app called Levelator, which as far as I know just does something magic. But the end result is the audio is leveled out just right so it's not too loud it's not too soft and things seem pretty uh well balanced then i started to realize I, I these keynote presentations even though i tried to make them simple and tastefully done i still wanted to kind of go a little more lowbrow and just scribble on the screen as i talked so i, I picked up sketchbook express it's a free app for the mac that just allows you to s sketch on a canvas I also got a bamboo tablet, which cost maybe 50 bucks or something like that, so that I could basically just draw with a pen uh, in order to get these sketches done. I, I then transitioned from Sketchbook Express, which is free, to Sketchbook Pro. Uh, I forget how much that cost, but it has a few extra features. The one I remember wanting at the time was allows you to save multiple layers of a drawing um, into a file and retain those layers. Now to get to the animation portion of things, I started out using two free apps, Pencil and Sticks, to draw these little animations. And that was pretty fun, but I kind of started to feel like I needed something a little more full-bodied. So I forked out, I think maybe 200 bucks, it's not too cheap, for uh, Toon Boom Studio. This has a really steep learning co curve and it's way too high powered for what I do, but it still does what I want it to do, which is basically frame by frame kind of stick figure animation. Uh, I wish there was a kind of a simpler, more Mac savvy sort of tool, but um, I didn't know of one. And Toon, Toon Boom, once I got a feel for it, did just fine. There are a few other tools that I also use. Uh, iMovie is something that comes in handy. It's a pretty cool tool and I still use it. Uh, usually what I'll do is I'll do some some bit of it in iMovie and then bring it into ScreenFlow. Um, Omni Dazzle is a tool by the, a free uh, app by the Omni Group that has one particular thing I like where you can draw on, on the screen. 
Sometimes I do that when I want to scribble on the windows on my desktop. I'm sure there are other things I forgot. I'll mention every tool I use in the blog post. Now I'm going to shift over to a little bit about my process. At first, I didn't have a process, and I would just do a little bit of audio recording, a little bit of video, a little bit of audio. I'd edit the audio, edit the video, and it was a big mess, and it was so time-consuming, and it was very difficult uh, to piece these things together. So then I decided to be a little more organized about it. I started out by just writing a rough script down. I don't end up going by the script word for word, but at least I have a rough script of what I'm up to. Then I uh, record that audio with Wiretap Studio, and I do some editing within Wiretap Studio to get rid of the ums, which I say all the time, and uh, clean up a few things. I might re-record a thing or two while I'm in there. Then I bring that audio into ScreenFlow. From there, I might, I end up tweaking the audio a little bit more, but most of the basic audio is in place at that point. Then I get working on the video. I just run through the video and try to decide how I want to animate it. Sometimes I just use Sketchbook Pro just to scribble stuff on the screen. Sometimes I'll just display text from within ScreenFlow. Sometimes I'll add an image or something like that and drop it into ScreenFlow. And then sometimes I'll do a full-blown animation in Toon Boom Studio. I try not to do a ton of animation just because they're they're the most time-consuming portion of it. But... I still want to get some in there just because they're kind of amusing and fun to do. And then I have a finished product that I run through a few more times and see if there's any dead space or areas that need more attention. And then I'll try to trick my wife into watching it, uh, see what she thinks. Usually she's a pretty good judge about where she gets bored. I can check in on where she's yawning and those are... That's usually a tip-off that I need to work in that area. And then I try to get it out. Uh, They're pretty time-consuming. I calculated that at this point, every minute of the video takes maybe five hours. So so a five-minute video, you know, that's 25 hours. And so I try to do shorter ones these days, partly because people say they like the shorter ones better, but largely because if I'm going to continue writing and have a day job and have a family life. I just need to keep this presentation stuff in check. It's super fun to do, but I I also want to knock out these other things. So that's pretty much my process. Hopefully some of this is useful and please let me know um, how I can give you better information so that pretty much everyone else is doing way better presentations and I can quit my presentation gig. uvizalco.com Pantslessness at its best